Finally, we'll turn to uh, Dr. Spencer. I will say, Dr. Spencer, that I know that uh, Senator Sessions very much wanted to be here and introduce you, the senator from your home state. And because of the vote and the scheduling mishaps, I think it looks like he uh, would not be able to do that. But I think he would want me to let you know that he was very eager to do that, had asked my permission to do that, and was ready, willing, and able to do that. So uh, you'll have to go forward without his introduction, but I'm sure he wishes you his best. Thank you, Senator, and thank you for the invitation uh, to you and the committee and to uh, Chairman Boxer. First of all, given everything that's been said today, uh, and following on Dr. Pilkey's uh, excellent testimony right now, I want to put everything we've been talking about into a little broader climate context. And this is a, a, a chart that will be uh, submitted as part of the record tomorrow, and at least a few members of the committee might be able to see it. The point here, which I, I will restate orally, is that, yes, we are unusually warm right now, just like we were 1,000 years ago during the medieval warm period and 2,000 years ago during the Roman warm period. Now, those previous warm periods couldn't have been our fault. The point is, climate varies naturally. Uh, I know the title of today's hearing is, is something like climate change, it's happening today, or something like that. Well, yeah, and it's always changed. Uh, the question is, so what? How much of that change is due to humans? That is a question which I believe I am the only uh, witness today who is actually actively researched and published on. Uh, for instance, uh, we have a new paper that's uh, just been accepted for publication, uh, which looks at not only the warming we've seen in the atmosphere over the last, let's say, 50 years, but also the warming we've seen in the oceans. Dr. Cullen mentioned the importance of not just focusing on the atmosphere, but also looking at the warming in the oceans, and, and she's very correct. And we've done that, and when we take into account how much the deep oceans have warmed since the 1950s, and take into account the effect of El Niños and La Niñas, and increasing carbon dioxide, and all of the other forcing mechanisms that the, uh, the IPCC uses in their climate model runs, we find that the climate system is relatively insensitive, consistent with the, the big uh, graphic that was shown earlier uh, where it showed that we're not warming nearly as fast as the IPCC climate models suggest we should have been warming. So the point is, a lot of evidence now is, is being amassed, which suggests that the climate system is simply not as sensitive to our addition of carbon dioxide to the atmosphere as most scientists think it is. Uh, I also want to say, since we're talking about most scientists, you know, I've, I've heard 97 percent, 98 percent. There's a recent paper by John Cook and co-authors who looked at thousands of research papers which have been published in the scientific literature to see what fraction, you know, support the scientific consensus on global warming. Well, it turns out that the 97 percent consensus that they found I am indeed part of, and Senator Sessions mentioned he would agree with it too. And my associate, John Christie, he agrees with it. In fact, all skeptics that I know of that work in this business all are part of that 97% because the 97% includes people who think humans have some influence on climate. Well, that's a fairly innocuous statement. And that's something that continually annoys me is those of us that are called deniers, it's never actually yeah, I think the D word was actually used by the chairman today. Uh, it's never actually been pointed out. What is it that we deny? Uh, also, you know, this 97%. Well, what does the 97% consensus mean? You know, what do all of those people agree to? Well, they agree to something fairly innocuous, and it's something that most of us agree to, that humans must have some influence on climate. The question is, how much? And how much influence makes all the difference in the world if you're going to be pace, uh, basing policy decisions, carbon taxes, regulations, legislation, whatever, on them. It makes all the difference in the world uh, exactly how much warming we can expect due to human activities. I'm going to leave it at that, I think, just to 
point out that uh, some of the statistics that have been um, given today, I think, are only giving half the story. Uh, for instance, uh, Jennifer Francis has, has talked about the decrease in the Arctic sea ice. And I know something about that because I'm the lead scientist on NASA's best instrument for monitoring that decrease in Arctic sea ice. Uh, but what she didn't mention is that Antarctic sea ice over that same 30-year period that we've been monitoring has been increasing. So there's a lot of half-truths in this business. Uh, you can point to some areas that are changing, some areas that are changing in one direction, some are changing in another direction. At some point, we have to ask ourselves, is all of this just mostly part of what the climate system does naturally? Uh, with that, I will end my testimony. Thank you very much, Dr. Spencer.